News Chief White House Correspondent Major Garrett has been reporting on national politics for two decades now. He's covered five different presidents. He just recently wrote a new book about his experience covering the Trump White House. The book is called Mr. Trump's Wild Ride. I spoke to Major Garrett earlier today about what he hopes to accomplish with the book. Major, there have been a lot of books already written about the Trump administration. So what are you trying to do in your book? Right, the great question. Does the world really need another Trump book? It's, a, it's an excellent question. Here's my answer. It does if your question is, what happened? Why did it happen? And what's going to be with our country, whether we like the Donald Trump presidency or dislike the Trump presidency? What's going to be with us? What are already legacy items? because Donald Trump and not Hillary Clinton was elected. That's what the book is about. And you might ask yourself, have we had enough books that are about palace intrigue? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. The market seems to be fascinated with that. My book is different. My book is about those people who actively participated in and some people who tried to stop what the president has achieved, but how it happened. All on the record, all attributed. So if you're asking yourself, can I believe what was said or what I'm reading? Well, when there's a name attached to it and a direct quote around it, I think the answer is yes. You have covered uh, five, this is your fifth president, I understand, in your career. Yes. For several different news outlets. How is covering this White House on a day-to-day -day basis different from your previous experiences? So there's a chapter in the book called 10 Days in May. It begins with the decision by President Trump to fire James Comey and all the things that happened in the next 10 days. I describe that as a traumatic and emotionally exhausting phase of my journalistic life. And it was for a lot of other journalists who were working alongside of me at the White House. That was the 10 days of which I've never felt the same at any White House. Different from 9-11, I was with President George W. Bush on that day in Sarasota. And everything that flowed through that, that was more traumatic, more emotionally draining, and more terrifying that moment than anything in the Trump presidency. But the unpredictability, the volatility, and the sense that so many different things can happen that have such great weight or feel at the moment they have such great weight, and then having to balance them out, focus on what matters, try not to get obsessed with what is interesting but may not in the end matter, that's a big challenge of the Trump presidency, as it was during the campaign. In the book, you talk a lot about big things, big transformational things that are happening in the Trump world. White House. So what are those things and what things do you think still hang in the balance? Well, trade hangs in the balance. That's a big promise unresolved. But the president has already changed the way America enforces and talks about immigration in a way that I think is going to be definitional pro and con for a very long time. He changed the tax code and we're going to be living with the results of those changes to the way the federal government taxes corporations and Americans for a very long time. And the federal judiciary, already a Supreme Court Justice confirmed, maybe a second, already on the appellate bench, a great number of appellate court justices nominated and confirmed by Donald Trump. So those areas alone, I would also add changing American policy in the Middle East, away not only from President Obama, but President George W. Bush, and taking on North Korea, both aggressively at first and now in this flowering of possible diplomacy and maybe a resolution of that. All of those things are fundamentally different than the approach taken in some respects by President Obama and even George W. Bush. So in that sense, Donald Trump, I would argue, whether you love his presidency or hate it, has already changed the country in some pretty significant ways. Well, presidents before President Trump uh, were rarely fans of the coverage that they received. But President Trump has called the fourth estate the enemy of the people and labeled a lot of political reporting as fake news. So how at a time when the country is so divided, how are people to deduce the truth in that environment? That's largely up to them, but the president has laid down this gauntlet of accusation against the media and tried to suggest that almost everything written about him that is skeptical or, in his terminology, negative must therefore be biased and therefore wrong. What consumers of journalism have to do is what they've always had to do test what they see against the facts that they're able to obtain them and as history marches on. And I said this before Donald Trump was elected or even a candidate, and I believe it. I wouldn't do what I do if I didn't. Credible journalism will always outlast incredible politicians. That's a perfect place to end it. Major, congratulations on the book. Continued success. Great to talk to you today. Thank you so much, Susan. Such an, I, we could talk to mm -hmm. him for a long time. Very he's always been really professional, too. Yes. I mean, no, regardless of wherever he's been, he's always told a pretty even-keeled story. And this is just the first year, so there's, you know, I'm sure there'll probably be 
uh, additional chapters. You think there'll be more books out there by the <laughs> I, I think so. The book is available, by the way, now. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us.